Hello, today is Thursday, September 24th, 2015, and with that we are starting our Reiki school, first event in our Reiki school. And Jim and I will be doing this, and we have today's students and guests, and everybody say hello, Brian, Douglas, Gabriel, Jillian. Sabrina, Sarah, Valerie, Hello, and Wendy. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. That's Hello. Hello. Harris. Hello. Also, miss, also miss for everybody. It's Sarah and Harris. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hello. In Dublin. And I share the control, so my helpers, if you need to uh, do something with microphones and volumes, you, you're welcome to do it. Okay. All right. Um, the plan is that we start Reiki school, and it's fun. So Jim and I are officially certified Reiki teachers. So it's level four. We reached it. And it's not by chance. We wanted it. We did it. We did a lot of hands-on Reiki, and um, we got to that. And we paid for that, actually. All right, so we have certified teachers. And obvious next step, thanks. Um, to our uh, friends, they, they wanted us to teach Reiki, and one of the reasons is it's, it's a path for you to, uh, to get in touch with spirit in a very tangible way, and for some it is a way to heal themselves and heal their friends and family, and for some, for some it is a path to become a professional Reiki healer. So what we will offer, we will offer um, online classes, paid online classes, starting this Monday. This Monday we will have a first part of the class, Reiki 1A, and next Monday we'll have Reiki 1B. Each one is four hours. Jim teaches two hours, I teach two hours. And between the classes, uh, uh, the students will go and practice. And that's very important because we cannot be He'll help you practice in our presence, so we have to go find your subjects and practice on them. And we'll teach you, on, on day one, we'll teach you how to do that. And if you can't find any human around, you can practice on animals, of course. But you have to go and put your hands on, 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 on uh, subjects, humans and animals, and, and do practice. And then at the end of uh, day two of the training, two weeks from now, two and a half weeks from now, you will get a certificate. And it costs, it, it, it is a discounted price because we do it for our members. It's $100 for AQ1. And uh, also for our members, we do the pay later, how do you say, uh, pay in installments later plan. That is a word for that. And the payments go to Reiki at humancolony.org and our volunteer helper, our friend Kim will take care of all the registrations and sending out signed, hand signed, printed out certificates to those who completed the classes. And good news, there is no exam. By Reiki, principle of Reiki, anybody can get it. There is no one who can who is refused. If you pass the class, if you were able to attend the class, you will get the the certificate. And Reiki one is allows you to to do Reiki free of charge. You can accept donations, but you are not professionally, uh, you're not a professional charging for that. And Reiki 2 allows you to become a pr practitioner. Reiki 3 gives you additional knowledge how to do Reiki. And Reiki 4 gives you the teacher instructions so you can create new Reiki practitioners and like all, all levels of new Reiki, Reiki uh, practitioners, masters, and, uh, and teachers. That's that in brief. And then I will give Jim um, the microphone. And also, if you want to give a blessing before we start, and then we go. Now we do a free lesson. It will actually teach some elements of, of the Reiki and give you some introduction to the Reiki. Okay. Uh, I'll do a little blessing. Uh, before we start, and then I'm going to uh, give you a little inspiration about Reiki. Hold on. 
Thank you, Mother, Father, God, for your presence here, for being with us today, for loving us and guiding us the way you do, and for the beautiful ascension and the wonderful new energies that are here to help us along. We just thank you. We know right now it's a little confusing and there's a lot of energy moving around, but we know that it's all going to work out. And thank you, Mother Earth, for staying with us and dealing with us and helping us grow and being our mother. So help us with this class. Open our healing elements. The palms of our hands are actually full of healing. So just be with us, and we will thank you and praise you for all the outcome, which is wonderful healing, and who knows what else, because here it is involved. So thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, I wanted to tell you about uh, a little bit. I, he was telling you about Reiki, but I wanted to tell you what it can do for you. It can do more than just help you become a Reiki healer. When I was, when I lost my job, my friends brought me to Reiki healing, and I had many uh, Reiki adjustments because I was depressed, I was low, I was not in a good shape because I was older, and I knew it was going to be very difficult for me to get another job. But Reiki actually made me feel great and made me feel like a person again and took away a lot of the depression and I, I just craved it every week it wasn't a dependency but you know that it makes you feel much better think much clearer and this will be able to, something you'll be able to do for other people so but what I discovered was that I had Reiki ability also I worked with a lady named Robin Walsh I asked her one week after a couple months of just getting Reiki if I could help give Reiki. I, and she goes, oh, yes, anybody can do it. So when I started giving Reiki, she she realized, she went, oh, my gosh. She, th she went in the kitchen and looked at my hands and said I was a natural Reiki healer. So that was a wonderful thing. That made me feel really good. But it was, and she started teaching me different hand positions and things of that nature but um, what was very exciting was the ability to feel the energy in your hands and feel the energy going into other people now not all not everybody has that gift but it still happens it is up to your higher guides if they let you feel it or not but when I started feeling that I could give Reiki to other people it opened up a whole new avenue of thought about what I could do for the future. I thought maybe I, if I took one and two, I could be a Reiki practitioner and make some money and um, support myself. Well, um, it takes a long time to do Reiki one and two. Not, I mean, not a lot of time, but it's not like an immediate thing. You get a certificate on the first, you know, you have to plan and practice and things of this nature. So, but after I got my Reiki 1 and 2 certificates, I was able to start getting some Reiki customers, and that was very nice. But let me tell you this. Reiki, I, I was, Max was one of my Reiki customers or clients, one of my weekly clients, and it, through that connection, I became a channeler as well because of the spirit of all the things that were going on. Do you believe that's true, uh, Max? Thank you for asking. To put the record straight, I became your client later, and you started channeling right there when we had Reiki share. Basically, there was three beds in the big room, and there was about ten people, and it was a collective thing where three people lay on the bed and others do Reiki. So at that time, you just started channeling. So it happened before that. Oh, I did yes. Like, yes, it was like I started, that. Yep. I started hearing voices in my head at your house, though. Okay. Um, I didn't know that I channeled at a Reiki share before us, before that. Or maybe we had just two different realities. <laughs> well, well, keep going, keep going. That, that happened. Okay. Um, they just didn't let me remember that. That's all. Uh, that's Thank you for, rem for bringing that in, so... But anyway, it was through Reiki that I did start channeling. So, and and here I am today. So, another the other thing about Reiki is that 
it can be so it is very relaxing the first thing it does is cause you to be very relaxed the, the client that you're working with will become very relaxed and if they don't become relaxed it's harder to get the healing done because if they're tense the energy is not going in the way it should and so you will learn how to what will teach you how to become in tune with your customers or clients if you prefer I prefer the word clients and I prefer the word patients patients <laughs> patient, clients whatever you want to call them you will help we will help you get in tune to them so that they can also relax so that they can also become part of the healing and uh, and, and not just sit there and be nervous so uh, also it works in many different levels it can work on pain it can work on different things it can work on stress it can work on emotions and so it's not just for one kind of health but a full physical health plus it works on your energy field which is very important to keep open and flowing because if your energy field like your blood field and your any other field your electricity field electronic field your brain synapse and all those uh, how it speaks to the body if any of those if any of the communication is blocked then there's health problems so this helps keeps all those fields open so that you have better health and those people that have Reiki once a week have a greater chance of staying healthy because their energy fields all the fields in their body are being worked on and being kept open so um, not that they won't ever get sick or anything like that but if there's a greater chance for health and plus you have you know your each person has their own belief system about how to stay healthy so this will fall into it uh, you want Max? to add anything to that? Yes, Max? Brian, yes, go ahead. Jim, yes. I, I, I just wanted to share something with you guys real quick. Um, when I came to Jim's house, an example of Reiki, when I came to Jim's house, um, Jim gave me a channeled Reiki session, and I have to say, uh, Jim worked on my knees. My knees were kind of bothering me, kind of stressing my legs, my knees. And after one session, I've had no pain whatsoever after that. And I wanted to say thank you, Jim. Oh, you're I'm, welcome. I'm a big believer in Reiki, and I love it. Yeah, thank you. There are so many stories like that. Miracles happen. Um, you know, I broke my ribs, and I had to go to a Reiki practitioner, my teacher, Barbara Carlton, for two weeks every day. And I would come there like dying from pain, and I was coming out of the bed, completely healthy person. For half a day, it lasted, and then you know, broken ribs, I broke the ribs. Then I had to come next morning, and in two weeks, I was fixed. Basically, after that, I played volleyball and was completely fixed. But you know, the, the effect was absolutely tangible, like half dead, almost perfect. Uh, I, as we interrupted, let me. Um, let me give a little more piece. So energy, energy, Reiki energy. Uh, what do you deal with? It's as I formulated. It is a franchise of conscious spirits. A franchise of conscious spirits. We are not dealing with some mysterious substance. It's not substance. It is people. They are real. They have consciousness. They have their own ideas. They make their own decisions. So when you become initiated into Reiki, you are basically applying and being accepted in the community. And you volunteer to serve their channel. You become a channeler of their energy. And when you invite them, they come and they work for you so that's why it works so well because it's you have a very qualified healer on the other side working together with you okay also I'd like to add to that with their energy the energy of the universe and the energy within you that is combining with the the patient's energy and if you let the patient know that 
they are a part of this healing with their intent that makes the power of the healing even greater because all the energies are mixing together even theirs they're helping themselves to heal because we're amplifying all the energy that's going into them they're using their own Reiki energy to help them heal as well along with all the energies that are helping us so it's a wonderful thing and your your patient or client should be aware that they're not just there to get something but they're also helping to heal themselves their intention to heal themselves and and bring in this energy from other places is important because if their mind is drifting if they're not really thinking about it it, it, it can be a little less impactful the impact could be a little less don't you agree with that absolutely so give them the opportunity to help themselves as well and if their belief systems if they struggle with the belief system to know if they if they even have Reiki just say do an intention that this is going to help me heal and think about that during the healing you don't have to feel anything you don't have to uh, worry about anything just let go and intend yourself to heal because also if they're thinking about that they're more likely also to let themselves relax more because they're not thinking about somebody in the other beds or something that's going on in the family let them think about their own health during that period of time and it will help them to relax into a thought process because you are helping them heal Think of it that way because the first thing that Reiki does is make someone feel totally relaxed. That is the first thing it does. And what does relaxation do? It promotes healing. Why? When's, when do you heal the best? When you're sleeping. So when you're, you know, this is when you're the most relaxed, that's when you get a better, the best healing. Does that make sense? Perfect. Thank you. That's what I'm saying uh, very often. Reiki is an assisted meditation basically we just come there and serve as antennas as a channel for Reiki but it's up to the patient whether to take it or not up to the client they they come very very often they come stressed out jittery energized co caffeinated and basically you help them help them to get into meditative state and in first time maybe in the first session you just talk to them more than do their energy healing but talking with intention explaining them how to get into that state uh, and then as you initiate them into Reiki later they come I mean it doesn't have to be your patient or somebody else's but basically if the person is initiated into Reiki they know how to get into that state and as you get more Reiki you tune faster into that energy and you become relaxed faster you don't have to take that Reiki healing from another person you can do Reiki on yourself it is absolutely normal to be your own healer okay and that is true and a lot of people forget that it's not just their energy that is working it's the energy of those that they have helping them as well let me turn that off real fast also, I wanted to add to that is the first time I do a Reiki on a patient that I don't know very well or as this is their first time, you're right. You do a lot of talking. In fact, you tell them what to expect, why to expect it, if there's anything they could possibly feel because some people feel the energy from the hands, some people don't. But you can tell them if you feel the tingling or if you feel this or that, it is not it is not bad if you feel heat heat is very healing you do a lot of talking and letting them know what is happening during the first session and so usually my first session goes a little long in fact it always does the first session yeah. always goes an hour 15 an hour and a half yep. because Absolutely. you're doing a lot of talking and a lot of revealing what Reiki is doing with them and how you're feeling and how they should feel and many of the other things 
and the, uh, you ask them also if you can touch them or not touch them. So that there's another choice they can make. So, but you see, anything that makes them feel more comfortable is where you want to go. And the first time you you talk them into their comfort and let them know as and answer as many questions as you can because this is the very first session and this is the, the time to get all those questions and answers taken care of. Let's now do a little bit of grounding. Let's bind this information to where we are now. Everybody take a deep breath and prepare your questions. Let's do some dialogue and before you do the questions uh, I looked up the time so it's uh, the first class Reiki 1A happens this Monday a few days from now and it is at 2 p.m. Eastern time and it lasts four hours two hours me to our gym so from 2 to 6 p.m. Eastern time and to sign up you send email to Reiki at humancolony.org now uh, second class Reiki 1B will be a week after that on Monday it will be Jim and Max and both at both classes we will do initiation which is in Reiki is called attunement so we do attunement today we'll do attunement on Monday and we'll do attunement Monday after that and um, after that we will keep will it will be all broadcasted and uh, and uh, published and then after that we'll keep repeating that Reiki 1, Reiki 1, Reiki 1 and then I think we'll give two months to people to get to learn or to, to practice between Reiki 1 and Reiki 2 and then we'll do Reiki 2 class and at that time you'll get certificate Reiki 2 and then you can start really doing your Reiki practice so we hope to give birth to uh, Reiki practitioners who will establish their practices and I have a feeling that we will evolve a lot. We will. We are teaching the certain Reiki right now, as in our second lesson, Reiki one lesson. It will be next step, and then the next step, and then the next step. And every Reiki practitioner does it somewhat different. Some do it a little bit different. Some do it a lot different. You know, Jim and I do very different types of Reiki. I learn from Jim. Jim learns from me, and uh, we all synergize, we all synchronize, we learn the, the energy from each other. And also there is a traditional passage of the vibe, of the vibration from the founders of Reiki. We will talk about that later. And now I invite the questions. Please unmute yourself, speak a little bit. Yes, ask questions. If you have any questions whatsoever, there's no dumb questions. If you need to know the answer, we we hopefully will have it. If we don't, we'll get it for you. Or even if you do know the answer, still ask the question. <laughs> exactly. Just verify the information that you already have if that's necessary. If you need confirmation that this is what you should do, then ask the questions. I'll because stop. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So when you're when you're talking to a client, yes. um, how do you express it in a way that you know their expectations is not okay? You're going to cure me here today. Okay. Um, you let them know. Well, you ask them first. What are your expectations? That is the first question, and then um, or one of the first questions. Or why did you want to come today is a good question too. And if they say I want to be totally healed, then you're going to know that you're going to have to talk to them, to them about that because um, that is part of the belief system to become totally healed for one thing. And Reiki can do that in one session. I've had people that were totally healed of uh, certain things in the first session, like uh, sciatic nerve conditions and migraine headaches and things of that nature but it's also part of their belief system and how well they receive the Reiki not everyone receives it the same way so when you're talking to your client about that you ask questions to them now why were you, why are you coming today what are you expecting what hurts do you have any diseases 
you know, is there uh, any problems in your family history with heart problems and things of this nature? Um, you can actually set up a, a, a little question and answer period if you want, but I usually put them on the table and let them start relaxing while I'm asking the questions. And this way, they, when they're talking about themselves, they get more relaxed. Isn't that interesting? Because when we talk about ourselves, we feel more comfortable because we know what information we can share. If we're being asked a lot of questions, that makes us a little more uncomfortable. So if you were to ask questions, do it first and then let them ask questions because then they'll be starting to relax into the process. Does that answer your question? Yes. Let, let me add to, um, yeah, Jim and I will always have tons of different answers to, to, to a simple question, right? Because it's, it's not a simple answer. Right. right. So what to expect? Uh, it really depends who, who is coming. I will describe a few examples, like a typical Reiki patient who already has been initiated into Reiki, has different expectations. They come for a relief of specific thing usually. They come when they can't really hold it because it's like too much of pain or too much of disbalance. I have to go to uh, other practitioners because my self-healing sometimes just you know, stops work and I have to really fix something. And usually the, thing, the things that which I come to get fixed are disbalances, blockages. Uh, like in certain part of the body I just start feeling drainage, like my, I'm thinking a lot so what my brain sucks energy, attracts tons of energy, so energy comes out of other places and that place starts being low on energy. I just feel like, like it's just dra it's drained. And I'm trying, trying, trying to re redistribute it back and it doesn't work. So I have to find a Reiki practitioner or similar practitioners, not necessarily Reiki, energy practitioner. And they do the miracle. They just do something, their magic, and it comes back. And I can hold onto this gray sometimes for a day, sometimes for a week, sometimes for a month. But usually after a month I have to come again. Um, another pain I had, it was a combination of a nasty boss and a family where everything was perfect but I was given a lot of energy, the family was taking that energy and that that combination was, was painful. So that it came out with a certain specific pain in a certain organ, internal organ, which just, you know, was really painful. I had spasms and like I had to lay on the floor lie on the floor just because it, I, I could move. It was that bad. And that's when I first found my first energy healer. And it was enough maybe for about three, four weeks. I had to go to her three, four, every three, four, four weeks. And I, it just helped me function. It was just a perfect combination. I had a good salary. I paid the money. I drove there. I didn't pay tons. I, I believed that she would help, but I didn't really study anything. She didn't talk to me a lot. She just did her work and it worked. And for me it was an initiation that, you know, that works. And then later I moved to another place and the first thing was how can I go to another city and there is no, I, I, I will be away from my healer. And I googled around, I found another healer. It wasn't Reiki, it was Qigong, but it was the same energy healer. And it worked just as well, even better, or comparably better. And um, other examples, like often people come to me and they're brought not by inner pain, not by physical pain, they're brought by stagnation in their life or by uh, inner voices. They have to go and learn that. So something tells them they're spiritually inclined to learn that and that for them it is a door to spirituality. They're stuck in their spiritual development or they're stuck in their job situation or they're stuck in their no job situation, <laughs> which is more often, or they are stuck in their love relationship, or they are stuck in depression, or anxiety and anger. And um, Reiki is one of the answers. It's not the whole answer, but it is a big part of the answer. We can talk about first conversation for another hour, 
um, I, I think we have covered it a little bit, and I invite more questions. I have one more question, if I may. Yes. Okay, my, my second question was, okay, I, I'm going to put it as if, you know, this is somebody approaching you, and they come to you, and they say, you know, my friend told me about this, that he had helped her, but, uh, you know, I'm a very religious person, and I don't really know what this is. Um, could you... Like yes, nice, the, nice, nice question. Perfect question. It's yeah. one of our. We have like basic questions, like about forty of them. It's one of those forty questions we teach. Jim, do you want to start? Yes, I would just tell them uh, you can call on any spirit that you want. It doesn't have to be any that you don't believe in. You can you just believe what you believe now, and it's about your belief systems and how. And this will help you. Help the energy come in. The energy that is coming from you has no evil in it. It's all positive energy. Your intent is for positive energy to come. You're you're intending only positive things. And if you if you believe that it will help you, it will. And if you're afraid of it, then perhaps maybe you shouldn't. But the thing is about Reiki, it. It is for everybody. It is not for just those who believe one particular way. It is energy. It is from the universe. It's from from you. It's from me. It's from your the spirits that you believe in. So it is not something to be afraid of. We're not bringing in any voodoo. We're not bringing in any dark spirits or anything that you don't believe in. It's all based around your belief system, actually, and what you believe as a person that this is. Now, if you believe it is bad, then then you shouldn't do it. But your belief system does enter into it. When I uh, when I offer or when I've been asked to help to help with that, you know, sometimes the most resistance, by some reason, are the Jews. Uh, somehow for them it is, if it is not kosher, they are not supposed to touch it. And what is interesting about Jews is that they wouldn't eat in Christian restaurants, but they would eat in uh, in uh, Chinese restaurants. So Reiki comes from the East, so that might you know be a good, I mean, yoga is fine, right? Many religious people will do yoga. Reiki is just a sister of yoga, I would say. It's the same energy, Qigong, Reiki, acupuncture, acupressure. It's, um, at least it is marketed, and it's essentially it is what it is. It is in a different plane than religion. It uses certain healing energies, but it doesn't concern itself with the question, main questions of religion, which is origin of man, what is God, is it a trinity, who is the true prophet, who is not true prophet, it's all beyond Reiki. Reiki starts at the very basic level of health and stops at the very basic level of health. And if you want to go farther, it's a good door to go farther. But Reiki by itself, the definition of Reiki, the definition of Reiki is energy healing. That's it. No more religion. You know, if you want to do religion, it's fine, but it's not Reiki. Reiki is energy healing. That's it. Yes. Okay? That's that's one of the answers. And then how I do, do that, I, I, I say, my intentions are pure, which are, I want to help you. I am receiving healing energy from the universe. I send it through my hands. And I could use a few Reiki symbols, one or two or three, which have very basic meaning. And um, I don't call for any bad spirits. I call for healing spirits. And if you wish to invite your healing spirit, spirits, which usually for Christians it would be Saint, tell me which one, so, you know, Mary, Jesus, uh, Nicholas, there are a few healing, spirit, a few healing um, saints. So you invite them and I would be happy to work with them. I don't have anything, any, any particular, and I don't work with bad energies. And then uh, feel for yourself, so basically uh, when a person lays down or sits down, usually if a person is not ready to lay down, they just sit down or sometimes they stand. And I put my hand like 
like if it's a standing person, it's like Vulcan's, uh, how do you call it? Mind meld, mind meld. And that's my favorite mind meld thing. It's actually, it's mirror, but it's almost like that. And um, and they feel the energy, often they, sometimes they don't, but often they feel the energy and I say, you know, that's it. When the mother touches their, touches their, her, you know, if a child hurts their something, part of the body, the mother would put their hand and it's a healing energy of the mother sent, sent to the child. When you hurt yourself, you touch and it helps, it heals. The hands have the healing properties, so that's what I use. There is no more, no more, if you don't wish, wish to be there, more complexity, there is no more complexity. Right. And when you when your mother kisses it better, there's also energy there as well. But I do have to differ with you on one point, Max. Yes. I do not like it. I do not like to do people standing up. I've done that a couple times, and they always get nauseous because the energy is too strong. Sitting or laying down is better in my book. Standing up sometimes people just the energy is just too strong, and they don't feel good. It's just not relaxing enough. It makes them really, really relaxed, and then they're like, Ugh, I need to sit down. So uh, I start them in a sit-down or a lay-down position so that they don't – because it is a very, very relaxing uh, – it's a very relaxing beginning. I mean, that's what it does to start. So when they're standing up, they get really relaxed, and they want to fall down or they want to – Sit down. So you might as well just sit them down or lay them down. Oh, so. okay. Uh, I, stand up. I do stand up comedy. Stand up Reiki. I do um, to friends for about say a minute. Yes. That, and that's to people good. at light workers gatherings, when you want to connect to someone who you met, that is like mind meld thingy. It's not for healing. It's for exchanging energy. Okay. It's like Understood. a hug. It's like a Reiki hug. A mind Very melt. <laughs> now I understand because if you do it for more than a couple minutes, it starts to they start to get woozy. So um, at least that's my experience. So yes, is if it's like a hug or something like that, yes, by all means, standing up is fine if you only do it for one or two minutes. Now let's do more questions. I have one. If I may. Yes. My question is, I have had energy healing that is called the bars. I don't know if you're familiar with that. What is it called? The bars, B-A-R-S. No, I'm not. It is uh, where she would place her hands on my head, feeling the energy, like you were kind of saying with the mind meld, something like that. But... Um, in doing that, when she would do that, it was as if I was not in control of what I was saying, but I could only say the truth. Um, and some things that would I would say and do are like not in my character, like giggling like a little girl and things like that. I just was curious if this was similar or not, or if you even knew what I was talking about. I have n I personally have not experienced anything like that, but I have experienced when I'm doing Reiki, I become very intuitive and know many things about what, what they're going through in their body and what they're going through in their personal life, and it just comes to me. It's just part of the intuitive part of me. It's, it's who I am, basically, and other persons can do that as well. But uh, as far as making... People tell the truth. I don't think that I have, I have experienced that. Okay, I I didn't experience myself, but I I'm, I know what it is about. I believe it is a true uh, healing modality. It's somewhat different from Reiki. There is a lot of talking involved. A lot of talking. It's uh, basically talking the spirits out and doing some sort of probing through talking and allow and guiding the patient to heal themselves through talking, answering questions, and tapping on different places and touching different places. I would say it's a different spirit franchise. It has a lot of words and symbols and things which are supernatural there. It's quite different from Reiki. In Reiki, 
I do that conversation where I put, place the, ask the, the client to lay down, place the hands on their head from the behind like that, and we, we do the first consultation. But that is mostly to establish a link and to get initial initial um, first information, a clear clarify their intention and establish their trust. And um, sometimes it is even not words, but mostly the vibe. Very often, if a person is not inclined to speak, the only thing I need to know from them is this, the day and month of birth, uh, so I can relate to their astrology and their favorite color. And that's all I, and you, I don't even ask the name often. Uh, and sometimes it's a long conversation, but um, that, that's it. In Reiki, the talking is only, I would say, an additional plus. It's not the way of healing. The way of healing is very silent. You're actually working in some area which cannot be even described in words. It's all, it's all about intent. If the person lays down and allows to do the Reiki on themselves, they volunteer to be healed. They, it's it's a, their step forward to the healing, and it's their permission, consent to receive that healing. It's very important that the person consents to be healed because some people like to be sick. Some people just don't want to be healed. They, you know, they're ready to pay money, but they won't actually change. And when person makes that step and lays down on, on the Reiki table, it is, you know, giving themselves into the healing. It's very important. Yes, I have a couple. I know what you're talking about, Max, of those people that don't want to be healed. I have two clients that they have the same problem over and over, but yet it's been cleansed and healed, and they bring it back and bring it back and bring it back and bring it back. And um, they really can't live without it, basically. They get rid of it for a few days, and then they bring it right back because it doesn't have to come back, some of these things, because they're mild and, uh, and they're... They just, you know that they should be gone. So your spirit says to you, that should be gone. But uh, sometimes people hold on to some of their ailments. Maybe they don't have enough to talk about to people. I'm not sure. But <laughs> sometimes they do hold on to them. But if your intent is to actually let it go and let it be healed, then you're on, on the right track. Thank you. Any more I questions? Ha I have a question. Yes. How do you see Reiki with the belief system of the person? What I learned from Bashar is that the pain and stuff we have in each actually a belief system that we have have bought into believing. That yes. that kind of, and if it doesn't resonate with you, you start having so much pain. There's so many ways and, to do things. And, and do, do you go into the center of removing the belief system or just like... Yeah. Just help energetically, and then they can see that it helps or something. All right. Uh, one thing is we can't change anybody's belief system because they have uh, the uh, willpower to do that on their own. They have uh, free will. So we, we cannot go and say, oh, your belief system has to change. But we can say that this will work with your belief system. And there are many ways to be healed. This is, Reiki is only one of the ways, but this is one of the ways that people feel comfortable being healed. And so this is one of the modalities that people use because they're comfortable with it. It does not threaten them. It is not painful. It is not uh, intrusive to them at all. And so it is some, it's not for everybody, but it's for a lot of people that, that believe that it can be helpful. See, now, the doctor is a way to heal things. You go to the doctor. If that's what you believe was the best way to heal yourself, then you go to the doctor. Some people go to the chiropractor. That's a different modality of moving with the bones and seeing that they're all in place, and that makes you feel better, etc. Or you can do Qigong, which is, uh, or uh, Joe Ray, or you can do herb herbal medicine or homeopathic medicine. There's so many ways to heal yourself on the earth. This is one of them. 
and everybody has this energy within them. Everybody has the chakras on their palms and the wrists and the tips of their fingers, there's little chakras. So energy can come through there and help other people heal. Now, if this is something that resonates with you highly, then it is a wonderful thing. I have a Reiki practice myself. Even though I'm a channeler, by that's my that's how I make my most of my money. But I do have a Reiki practice with seven or eight people a week, and that and I love it. I think that it's a beautiful thing, and I love uh, have, having people heal. And it's something that I feel very confident about that they are getting a good healing, and that they feel very confident in my in the spirits that are coming through and the energy that is coming through. So, uh -huh. um, so the question, I just wanted to add the question. So uh, the belief system, is it Bashar, Bashar says that the pain is an indicator, right, that you are stuck in your development, basically. And I absolutely agree. In many cases, or in most of the cases, almost, it is, it is spiritual. The pain comes from the spirit and then precipitates into a certain part of the body. Very often I feel like I get into a certain situation where I stretch the energies to the level that my protective shield of energies becomes vulnerable. I wish something so much that I stretch myself and it kind of tears becomes open and negative energy comes in and often I feel like first it doesn't know where to precipitate, it just wanders around the body and sometimes it's so consciously noticeable I can feel it's like right here then it kind of travels right there and travels right there and next day I feel oh it's sedimented right here in my favorite place like one of the places like here is a joint which becomes pain in pain or the spine or one of the organs it's kind of got there and I know before it kind of made roots there if I do Reiki I can pull it out it is so physically touchable tangible you can really clean it out and sometimes I'm successful just to clean it out fast or I can go to a healer and the healer helps me to clean it out fast and I'm new again, I forget, I'm a new person, I forget about that. Um, but sometimes it is a belief system which just precipitates in a certain organ, like you are stuck there or you make that error over and over. Okay, now you come to Reiki or a patient comes to Reiki, patient comes to me and there is tons of options. The traditional Usui Reiki which we teach is not about talking. It's about placing the hands and doing the healing. So that's purified, pure traditional Reiki. There is no much talking. If the person needs to do change their belief systems, it's, it's not traditional approach to teach them. Now, the things change, and Jim and I and many others like to talk. And my teacher also likes to talk. Chat, talk. So sometimes I sense how ready is that you, I mean, and, and if, if you are a Reiki practitioner, every time, every hour, it's a new person. And some of them are coming over again and repetitive, how do you say, recurrent patients, and some of them are new. So very often you come, a new person comes and you have like a few minutes to figure out how ready they are to receive your advice. You know, like sometimes you ask the questions and you know the answer right away, but are they ready to hear the answer? <laughs> so, what's the answer? There is no universal solution. Some are so ready, so I do barely do Reiki. I do basically a lecture on light working, starting from reincarnation, ending up to energy flow and all the things in between and, and aliens and that's what they need and they, you know, there is a contact, they say yes, 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 give me more and I give as much as they wish to take. And sometimes they are capable of just taking one answer. So if they're capable of taking only one answer, usually they, you don't give them the whole answer. You give them the first step. That's my principle. Give them the next step. What do they need to do on their path to awakening, right? You don't have to give them the whole story of the creation. Just the next step. Max, 
Yes. I kind of feel like if you and Yegli help them, they will kind of bring up their belief system that they need to get out. So they will actually ask you what they need to be helped with. Uh, yeah, absolutely. For some people, it's hopeless. It's yeah, we have some people who come to us, we give them the answer every time in different uh, flavors, different uh, uh, dressings, and they hear you, but they don't hear you. They don't take it. And uh, yeah. I guess it's up to them. I mean, as a healer, you cannot refuse to provide the healing. As a spiritual teacher, you can't refuse to give the answer often, or sometimes you choose not to give it anymore because they don't take it. And sometimes you see that you give them perfect answer, which would work for most of the people, but not for that person. They would take it and, you know, hurt themselves. They would hurt themselves by even by chewing a chewing gum. I mean, that's, you know, there are some people who just don't take uh, uh, advice as well. So, yeah, the, the safest way is to, to be cautious, but, you know, um, I'm more like on the other side, no fear. Um, I would do what I feel is the best. I would close my eyes, put their hands on the Reiki person, ask what do I need to tell them. And if the answer comes very specific, you know, sometimes it's harsh. Sometimes a very specific answer comes. I have to deliver that message. I just deliver. I'm a channel. So it's not up to me to decide whether. I can decide how to deliver it, but if the message is sent and I feel that it needs to be delivered, I'm just a messenger. Very good. I wanted to, after that, I'm going to just go somewhere else if that answers your question. Yeah. Because I wanted to I let people know that there are benefits to being a Reiki healer. And one of those benefits is that when you're giving a healing, the energy is coming through you and also healing you in many, many cases. Since I've been a Reiki healer, I haven't had a cold. I've had congestion and stuff, but never a full-blown cold or, or I've been sick. And I have no aches and pains anymore. And that is like a miracle because I'm 60. And when you're 60, sometimes you have pains when you're 30. But I'm 60 and I don't have any. So the energy coming through me cleanses everything out of me. So uh, it's a beautiful, wonderful thing to be a healer. If you intended to go through you in a very pure way and heal yourself as you're healing others, guess what? You're getting a healing too. So because the energies that are coming are very pure and they're mixing with your energies to help you heal, help your energy systems all become greater as well and so not everybody intends that when they do their healings but as I've learned when you in intend for their healing and my healing then everything is clear it's all it all works so much better it's a very pure energy flow do you find that too Max yes yes thank you uh, again um, where do you want to go from here? Uh, we have about an hour left. Uh, at the end, I want to do a, an initiation meditation. So uh, the official Reiki 1 uh, attunement we will do Monday and Monday next. Today we do sort of just initiation for you to go and practice. Uh, it's a free initiation. Um, we'll explain how to do that. Before that, we'll kind of explain what what are the first steps to do Reiki? What are the first steps to do? Obvious, but just kind of how to relate to it. So next, say, 20 minutes, we do that, explain the first steps, how to get into Reiki. Second thing I want to do, Jim, uh, be prepared now. You can invite, I think 20 minutes from now, we will invite you to channel one of the Reiki masters. Uh, maybe the founder of Reiki, Mikao Usui, maybe his student, Hawaii Takata, or whoever wants to come through. That would be nice. And at the end, not now, not now, about 20 minutes from now. And at the end, um, I think we'll do the guided initiation meditation and we'll just um, initiate you into the proper vibe. Um, Jim, 
Uh, do you have anything else to say so far? I think the topic now would be how do you start? Hey, Jim. <clears throat> I actually, uh, hi, this is Wendy. I just have a hey, Wendy. question. Um, hi, I Wendy. To, I was wondering if you guys could expand for me just a little bit on when you were speaking about pain a little bit and about holding energy, something that I learned actually through you, Jim, through a channeling um, in a private session about healers holding energy that actually begins to cause them pain. Yes. So that's part of the question. And then the other part of the question is the person coming to you wishing to be healed and how they hold pain in those specific areas and release, the releasing of that pain because the, basically to Kerr and Bolshell said to with the intention to allow the energy out to release the pain within the healer as well. Correct. You'll be taught. I find, I find I have pain in my wrist from holding energy, and she said it's because I'm not using any. I'm not doing anything with the energy. That's where I wanted to go with that. Okay. You will be taught how to release the energy after after a Reiki session because there are times in a Reiki session when you're gathering energies that are not good from the person and you will have psychic surgery which you will be taught in one of the later classes but uh, sometimes energy comes out of them and you can feel it in your hands and at the end of the session it's good to cl clean your hands and wipe down your yourself to get rid of these uh, unclean things that have come out of them also with those people that come in with the with these uh, things that have built up sometimes they're empathic and they bring they are able to sense other people's emotions or they are feeling a lot of emotions from ages ago that they have they just kept in and they're not releasing and you they must be released because they can turn into sickness and pain so if if they come with this kind of pain in Reiki 2 you will learn the si some symbols and one of them is one of the emotional sy symbols but you if you sense that they are in pain you can ask if they have a a way to releasing this to mother earth to cleanse it to to get it out and a lot of times they'll need some help with that so but you do not need some help with that. If you are taking in the pain of others, if you are empathic, if you are bringing in, like when you're doing Reiki, you're feeling their pain or whatever, you can, after the session, wash your hands and actually brush. First of all, you would actually, we will teach you how to break the bond between you and the client. The bonds between me and the are broken for now. And that breaks any energy that could be transferred afterwards and also to wipe yourself down and cleanse yourself of any energy that might have come from them to you and also I I would suggest washing your hands as well. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Jim covered the basics. Um, it's, it's all about the vibe and tuning in and, and um, intention. If you are paranoid that you will catch something, obviously <laughs> that stimulates the idea that you can catch something. And if you believe that you can get rid of it, you can get rid of it. And it all comes to practice. Often uh, I catch, I mean, now I can uh, go into things where which I would be scared before, like go in public, right? It would be very scary for me in the past. And I would get a lot of pain just from thinking about that. And now I can go public and not to be scared and not to get pain from that. Same thing with Reiki. Um, it's it's even not about how heavy the sickness is. Some people are really sick, like working on like really, really sick people, and Jim does that without much problem, right? Uh, yeah. you, you get used to that. You just, the proper, I mean, it's very important to tune into the proper mood when you do that. If you think you have to and it's proper thing to do, it's the right thing to do, then you get in the proper way, vibe and you just do it without being hurt. 
And again, you do it only as long as you feel that you have the energy and you can do that. Sometimes, to me, it's like 15 minutes in the hospital is plenty and I, I got to go. Sometimes, like, like recently, I had like six patients in a row and number four was painful. Other were pleasant. I was feeling the energy flows right, everything's right. And number four was a nice, healthy, young Asian lady. Nothing wrong about her, just was painful. And uh, what do you do about this? Um, you, you understand you're a healer. You're doing what you, ha what you can, but you don't have to do what you shouldn't, right? So you do limited amount of delivery. You intended well, but you don't basically do whatever is painful. And for me, it is position is very important. Belief is very important. The tune in to this is very important. If I if I hold the hands and I feel pain, I disconnect. Pray, bring more energy, like do the exercise, breathing exercise, recharge, come to something which feels good, like feet or head or whatever, whatever part, the hand, the palm. In Reiki, there is that flexibility. What do you touch? It's a, it's, it's a basic choice. Where do you go? And you hold as long as you feel that it's good. And if you need to move, you just keep moving. So changing the position is very important. I will yes. give you an illustration. Yes. Like we often do a shared, shared Reiki share, where there is like three beds, eight people, three people on the beds, others working around. And I was working on one of the people. and. Uh, first on the head, then I moved, like holding my hands in the air above the person, sending the energy. And at some point, my head hand just moved physically, like, vroom, jumped up. I looked around. I was with closed eyes. I looked around, and I saw that the lady on the next table just lifted her head to look at, at the clock. You see, on other bed, the lady just changed the position, and my hands is moved. The energies in the rooms are in the room are crazily connected. It's it's you know, yeah. if you draw how it is really connected, the lines, and some people are seeing them, some people draw them, it it, it it is wonderful and very interesting. So just moving around your orientation just a little bit changes the energies. And yeah. again, when when you come out, there is many ways to click cleanse and to release because you're a healer you are working as a franchise of spirits they clean you you tune into proper releasing state you do some meditations to clean it out you eat some food you drink some water to you breathe you walk on the sand on on the lake and if nothing helps you go to gym and gym fixes it <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to just say too the hardest person to heal is the one that doesn't need any healing because you'll put your hand on them and you won't feel anything wrong. And you're going, what's wrong? My, my healing's not activating. And if that happens, you don't have to, you're just going to have to be honest with them. If, there, if there's no energy going in there and they're in perfect balance, a lot of times you'll, you'll be able to spend maybe 10 minutes with them and say, you're okay. I can't really continue going because you're in good shape, your energy fields are good, you're not feeling any pain, you have no physical ailments, they are telling me that you're in good shape, you're sane. So the, actually the easiest people to work on are the ones that do have uh, disabilities and pains because at least there's something to work with. But when you're working with somebody that's fully well, you don't really feel too much. And see, I'm, my hands activate wherever they need to heal. I feel lots of energy going to the places where they need healing. And if somebody's really well, they don't feel much. And so then I know they're, they're pretty well. Now, if you put your hands on somebody and they, you don't feel anything, stay there for a little bit because that could be a blockage also. If somebody said, I'm having pain and you feel nothing, there could be blockages in the body. And if you hold your hand in that area long enough, the blockages will move and you'll start to feel the sensation of the energy moving. But stay there. If there's no sensation at first, that means they're blocked. And that is a wonderful thing to move that blockage because that's part of the healing process.
Go ahead, Max. All right. Thank you. Um, yes, absolutely agree. Uh, there is tons more to say what, what, what to do, and it's part of the lesson which we will give later. Yeah. What to Maybe. do if the energy doesn't flow. But basically, the simplest answer, don't sweat over it. It, it doesn't always flow. Even if you are the best healer ever, sometimes it's not supposed to flow. You are just officiating the healing process. You are a, a channel. If, if there is nobody on the other side, if by some reason the energy is not supposed to flow, it's not your business. In most cases, it does flow just fine. And sometimes it flows so strongly, you just you get burned, so you have to like, oh, oh, too much, let me, let me breathe. And then, you know, and go again, like, like a pia playing piano, right? <laughs> All right, so. We have know, yes. Max, I actually, when Jim was talking before about uh, Reiki healing you while well, he hears the other person. Yes. Um, I have a really good example of that. We were, it was actually Thanksgiving last year, and I was not feeling well. And I was just sitting in the living room by myself and just just there. And we were at my sister-in-law. And then my son, my oldest son, which doesn't believe that much and stuff, but I have always put my hands on them to help them heal. He goes to me, um, you know, he mentioned the person's name. He goes, she's having an asthma attack. Um, so he's like, can you do something? So I go over there. She was pretty bad. Um, everybody was hovering around her, and she was just not breathing right. They were getting ready to take her to the hospital. So I went over there, and right away, you know, I put my hand on her, and I started talking to her at the same time that I was doing the, the Reiki, the healing on her. It started calming her down. And she, she didn't end up going to the hospital. And everybody was standing there, okay, what did she just do? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, it turned out... Um, I got better also. You know, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. What I had went away completely. She got better. You uh -huh. know, she didn't she didn't have to go to the hospital or anything. So that was actually That's beautiful when it happened. The beautiful thing. Reiki is very powerful. Powerful means of healing. And when you sometimes go when people don't even ask, but they're really asking for help. That's when they can receive Reiki the best is when they really, really need it. And yes, you touch yes. them and they pull, they pull that Reiki in out of you, pull it down from the Mother Nature, up from Mother Nature, down from the universe. It's wonderful. It's a great thing. And um, another thing to keep in mind is that you know, I believe spirits, it's a secret, but I think it's worth revealing. In many case, the cases, the spirit guides are intentionally allowing people to give themselves a lot of pain to bring them to the right place. So the person gets pain, they go to the doctors, the doctors don't help, they come to, to us and they get the spirit advice, a spiritual, a spiritual initiation, the opening of the channels which they desperately need and the pain goes away right away. So that sometimes it is just a guiding <laughs> tool that the spirit guys use to bring people to the right place. You know, for me it certainly was like that. I, you know, I came to where I am now through the pain. <laughs> I came to my first healer, to the second healer, and to me people come with pain, and then I give them advice, and they get the answer, and also they get initiation, and the pain goes away. So, so you know, keep in mind it's. You're dealing with something very conscious, and uh, those spirits, they, they have their ways of, you know, if the person doesn't, they give, before giving someone the pain, they will give them lots of opportunities to go to the right place. If the person refuses to learn and gets stuck in their fears, basically they, they don't give pain, but they stop relieving pain, basically. That's what they do. They stop healing them. 
and the person just kill themselves with their fears and then at the end they go to the healer and they get the answers and they get the find and then they learn the lesson all right now um, so what do we want from you uh, do we have any people with Reiki degree here Reiki certification yes <laughs> who does mark here does I do uh, say your name because we don't. It doesn't show up on the screen. Sabrina. <laughs> Yay. And Mark. Yeah. Okay. Level two. Okay. All right. Um. So, uh, go and practice your healing. That's the main thing. Uh, the simplest thing is to practice, of course, on people close to you when you are in bed with your husband or a wife or, uh, and, or when you are sitting with your child uh, of course it has to be with their permission but you can do the Reiki even when you lay in bed you just kind of place your hands and it doesn't really matter in the beginning where you place your hands it doesn't even matter if you touch the person. It is the intention that matters 99%. And the placing is uh, is the leftover percent. And then uh, send the healing and you do that. The beginning is very simple. You breathe in. Yeah, let's do that now. Um, do we have someone to heal? I think there is someone. Yeah, let's do um, Justin Ubarra. Let's do this healing for Justin, all right? So take your hands and uh, breathe in. And um, when you breathe out, you send the golden energy to your heart. Breathe in, you take the energy from the sun, from the universe. When you breathe out, you send the golden energy in your heart. And then you place your head, your your palms on your around your heart, just to focus the attention and send energy to your heart. And then you intend to send this energy from your heart to Justin's heart. And you are a healer, you are protected. You just send your energy and intend best. So that's remote energy healing. And the same thing you do, you if you know what's where the pain is for the person, you just intend the healing energy to grow there as a golden ball of healing light. And after you're done, you want you might want to stay connected or you might want to disconnect. I really don't mind staying connected in most cases. In some cases, I certainly want to disconnect. And Jim usually uh, he disconnects, you know, at the end of the session. Jim, what do you add? How do you do? How do you start doing the Reiki? How do I start my Reiki? I do an intention, and I um, now anymore. I uh, if I know the patient, they know what my intentions are, and I do a little meditation for thankfulness that healing will be done. And then I start. I my first thing I do now is I go around the body and check the energy field. That is the first thing I do, and I stop at the feet and do a little bit of rubbing on the feet because this is a relaxation technique. The right reflexology starts to work and relaxes people a little bit more, so that's the beginning of the Reiki. Uh, just a little massage on the feet because that's very relaxing and helps them to start their relaxation process. But I go all the way around the body clockwise, because that is the the uh, putting in of the energy. If you go counterclockwise, that can take things out of the body. Now, if you're intending to get rid of uh, spirits or something like that, then that's something else. We'll talk about that much later. But when you're just checking the energy field, go clockwise around the body and um, check the energy fields and make sure they're all all open. All right, let me translate it. Let me translate it, Jim. You are uh, my my question was uh, when I meant you know the, that's the English. When I asked how would you start, I mean not your session, but how would you recommend a new beginner starts their learning of the Reiki? But hold on, I will translate what you already said. 
So right. when Jim says go around and feel the energy, what you do, if the person is receptive, you don't do it to a person which is not receptive, but if the person is receptive, you ask them to close their eyes and you just move your hand around. Sometimes you do two hands, sometimes you do one hand, and my left hand is way more sensitive to the energies. And what I do, I usually do like that. I send the energy with one hand, and my second hand is kind of reflecting this energy. So, so that's what I would I would hold, I would send like that. That hand is sort of shining like a beam of light. There is a flashlight here, and I shine the flashlight. It reflects that light to the person, and it helps me to sense. In most cases, if I do it. When I didn't warm up, I sense nothing, like zero energy. So how do you warm up? Like one of the simplest things, that warms up. In Qigong, you warm up like that. It kind of looks a little strange, but you warm up like that. For Reiki, I warm up, again, this thing, uh, just first I do the conversation. Then I do a little bit, of, uh, like a little bit, sending energy to the shoulders of the, of the of the client. And then when there is warming up, and then I do the, the and then I feel stuff, and then I feel stuff. Uh, second thing that Jim mentioned, and you don't have to do that, but that's nice way to kind of sense energies around. And the second thing that Jim mentioned is what to do with the feet. Of course, you know, you know, if the feet smell, you might not want to touch them. <laughs> and um, uh, sometimes that's a trick which I learned very recently, like a month ago, but it works really well. If it is appropriate, uh, a sh clean sheet of, uh, just clean sheet, you can put on the person and work through the sheet. So your oil from the hands doesn't touch their skin, you, uh, their, you know, dirt doesn't get onto you. And like if you work on the head, you kind of wrap the, the sheet around so you don't even have to touch the face. You can put the sheet over the eyes and touch the face through the sheet and the Reiki energy goes through the fabric just fine. There is no need for skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact. Of course, if it is your uh, relative or a child, that, that's fine. But if it is a new client and uh, there is a sensation that they don't want your uh, mm, bacteria and you don't want their bacteria or energies like the whatever oils then then you just work through the or you can work through the ear some some uh, girls or ladies or men are sensitive to the touch I mean because they've never been in English culture they've never been touched so if they prefer not to be touched you can easily work through it just it's little different it's little different you know holding the hands in the air like that is is a strain on the back, and uh, uh, sometimes the touch gives you a little pulsation, which is physical, and the buzz is physical. If you don't, if you don't touch, it's more energetic, like supernatural. All right. So now, how do you start your Reiki career? Where do you start it? What things do you do? That's what you meant. Well, I went to Reiki Share, and uh, a lot of people came to me. In their, after they realized that I could help them, they started coming to me. And word of mouth was a big thing. I got people from all over because of people were telling them that I was a good Reiki healer. So, um, but I think the first thing you do, you could advertise in different things. No, 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 no. Before you but get the training, before you get the training, the first, first, first step. Oh, well, tell me. Oh, I don't know. Um, I think you are ready to start right away. Like, uh, find yes. friends who are ready to take. Yeah. Take it. Uh, find animals who are ready to take it. Find trees, and the trees would would always be ready to take it. When you work on a tree, there is one position like that. You just send energy from the distance. Uh, another thing, you can hug the tree. Another thing, you can put the head the, the hands like that. Or like that, and that's that's kind of bigger distance. So there is imagine the the resonance of the electricity going between the hands, and intend to heal the tree and to heal the the trees. 
multiple trees are the same organism. The tree is just a part of the forest. So working on one tree, you work on the forest. Um, meditating with energies, when you do anything, just send the energies around. Like in the kitchen, food, uh, the area when you move around, when you walk around, just send the energies. That's the first initial step. The hands can send the energies. If you practice a little bit, you can sense the energy sent, sent from one hand to another hand. It feels like a little blow here and there. And the more you do that, the better you feel. And you can actually send it from distance. Or you can send it from close distance. And you can feel that electric, electric charge going here and there. And then finally, you do the healing on yourself. We authorize you. You can do it right now. Just by intention, when we do the initiation at the end of this session, we invite proper spirits, Reiki spirits, to work with you. And when you submit to this initiation, you provide your consent and invitation to start working with them. As, as soon as you do that, you start evolving. They will... In, rewire your energy flows in a way that more will be delivered to your hands and your hands become more of the healing. The hands are connected energetically to the heart. The heart is connected to the God, to the universe. So the energy comes from the universe to the heart and to the hands and then you can direct it to any other organ or even to the heart backwards. But the intention is focusing that energy. Okay? And then healing yourself the main, um, the main meditation is uh, right hand on the heart, left hand on the belly, and close the eyes and breathe and send the energy to your heart and belly and invite the healing to yourself. That's what would be number one position. And then if you have any specific place where you want the healing, say your gums, the teeth, you can send it here. and Laying like that may be a little bit difficult on the back, but if you do it on the side when you are like relaxing, maybe before the sleep at night or in the morning, that's a proper position on the side and you can direct the energy. The head of also, like when by one uh, hand under, one hand above, like you lay on the side and you send the energy through the palms. There is two flows, one goes through the middle of the palm, and other flows go, go through the ends of the fingers. Through the middle of the palm, it's, it's uh, diffused golden energy. Through the fingers, it's more like uh, springs of focused energy, like spirals of focused energy. So you can play with that, or you can play with that. Touching your head is nice, and uh, you can heal your head. And uh, any other organ, like if you have any, any other pain anywhere, you just heal yourself. Um, do it in a protected environment as you would do the meditation and invite the energy to flow. And what to expect? I usually feel the buzz, like, like bzzz, and sometimes it is, like the frequency goes, like especially in the head, it goes like <clears throat> quieter, but that frequency like very low, like, like the uh, track tracks sound of the truck in my in my body sometimes it is goosebumps sometimes it is like that frequency but but usually it's vibration and, and often it's the the blow frequency uh, very easy like blow sensation and uh, if you start feeling it that's it like the Reiki was invented formalized a hundred years ago almost exactly hundred years plus minus five years but the energy healing with hands is absolutely ancient. So uh, before the people were trained to do Reiki, they were doing something else. And in each culture, there were people who did the healing with the hands. So sometimes they were, they were initiated by official sort of teachers, but sometimes they just reinvented it from scratch. So, so you don't have to be authorized. We authorize you. That's a sufficient beginning and then expect that the spirits will work with you and transform you into a healer. Everyone is a healer. 
if you survive to this age, it means that you're a healer. You heal yourself already. And with that, I think it's time to invite a uh, Reiki master to speak to us for about 20 minutes, and then we do initiation, and we are done. I don't know the names of any of them except the Sui. Uh, Mikao Sui, uh, Hawaii Takata, Chujira Hayashi. Haya All right, simple. Usui, Takata, and Hayashi. These are three, three founders. Okay. Usui is the one who founded it. Hayashi was the one who made a school out of it. And Takata is the one who brought it to the West. But maybe the, there is a more modern okay. one. You know, whoever comes. Usui comes through. sounds good. What? I said Usui sounds good. <laughs> His first name Mikhail, Mick, Michael? Mikao. 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 Mikao Asui. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see who comes through. Just, just listen. Don't say nothing, just listen. Much prayer was happening to me at one time, and I did much fasting and praying. I know. The word place is that I found to be very powerful, very spiritual for me. Places that were very much alone for me. On the top of the mountain, on the hill, whatever you call. There was many experience from God and myself, much power to come down. And I pray for a way to help people to heal. I pray for a way to people to be fed and understand things differently because their spiritual lives were, were not well. They were not well. So my heart is break, and I hear their voice cry, and so I call out to God on mountain, hillside, to help me with helping them. God said to me, nothing for a long time there was nothing there that i did not feel nothing the spirit seemed to be away from me there was a void empty nest and i was very sad but i still believe god come One day, I made my way uphill to 
speak once again to God, the great creator, and then on the way I see people hungry and I see people hurting. And this time, God speak. I fall down. I listen. Very quiet. His voice very quiet, but very, very distinct, but very quiet. He should teach me that the hands and energies, they are connected. It is very quiet. He not speak in loud, loud, crazy, loud voice, but very quiet and distinct. And he show me the way of Reiki. Show me the power of the healing, so that I can bring it back to people, and they will have some hope with their illnesses and pain. He tell me not only regular body pain but emotion pain it will heal and heart pain and brain mind pain it will affect. I became very excited because I could feel in my hands much energy. And I give God much praise and thank him very much. And now I say to myself, I must put this to use. This is, must be used. I work with my family first. Distinctly, it works very well because they want help. It even remove hunger pains at times, which make me cry because there was not enough food. But as the positivity of Reiki move forward, and people eyes open, people think different. People move for Reiki to become part of who they are, then food increase. Why? I could not understand, but yet positive thought process bring in. It was not much more food, but was enough just to get by, where there was not that much before. And so Reiki work. And Reiki become. Reiki heal. And people rejoice. I rejoice and thank God that Reiki work and that hands activate all over. Not just my hands. Dogata but hands of many. And hands of many help many others until it become well respect. Well receive and understand. My heart is grateful for you to listen now as I tell you what happened. So, there was Thank much. You me go. Me go. Wait. There was much more to the story, but I condense. So, so you may speak now. Thank you much. Thank you much. Thank you much. Uh, I was so happy to hear you speaking because. 
many of our thoughts as we are studying are about the beginning. And now we heard the story from the first, from the you, from the first person. Um, I wonder if it would be appropriate. It would be all right if not, but if it would be appropriate, can you give initiation to the hands, to the palms of everyone present? If people uh, put forward their palms, can you send the energy to these palms? Yes. Everybody, everybody put forward your hands, I'm sorry, and now we are, we, I'm silent. And your hands extend. You must believe in your intent that this will be for you and for the mystery of that which will come to you. I will give you this symbol in your hands and give it a blessing. It receive you. You receive it. You work it, it work you. It inspire you, inspire it. Much love in healing and healing it in you. This is from God not from me, but my heart goes with it. My heart is with receive. My heart receive with your heart. Blessing from God. Chukure. So be that it is within your hands, hands, and the hands of all. This activation will come as a blessing from God. Receive, believe, accept. That is all. You may speak. Thank you. <laughs> I'm shaken. Thank you much. <laughs> mm. God give the tear of joy. God give the tear of joy to fall and to nourish earth and to relieve you of burden within. Accept gift, blessing to earth and blessing to soul. I go. Thank you much. Thank you for that gift. Thank you. God, it's God Thank gift. You. Thank you, God. Ah. <laughs> 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 
Hello. Wow. Usually I have something to say, but <laughs> but here I I don't know. How much, what else to say? <laughs> What's the matter? I think we're all weeping. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're very happy. That's good. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, Sabrina, it's your mm -hmm. turn to do your, your blessing. I mean, there is nothing yeah. to say. In, you know, any prose is not appropriate here. Only the <laughs> high languages are good. Mm. Okay. Um. Ta kyoko na kyoko tukua san tukua tati. E yilo koton tono kua tati o sunto ati. To ya kapani o kuku. E si a tani a kaki o tu a sato. To son ti a no aki. E ki o kuni o aki a tu a ta. To ya son o a kato. Escayo no aki a tu si ki. En tu a na su a ta. Ta yi o kutu mu. E kuo nasi o kutu. E yi o no a katato. The heart, the body and mind are all lifted up to the God level. When you understand that he is with you in every facet of your being, there is no part of you that is without God unless you choose it to be. And therefore, as you move forward, as you learn new things and grasp the understandings of those things once not understood, you grow in your godlike essence. Do not be prideful. Do not be boastful or arrogant. For they are not truly all yours, but belong to both of you. You and your Creator together, working as a team to love and grow and be to the best of your ability, who you are meant to be. Take this time and ponder all the things that you are and all the things around you that you have not yet understood and smile and thank God that they are still there for you to grasp. Okay, thank you everybody. Uh, it was a miracle as, as usual. Oh. You know, we got to get wow. to, to miracles. I guess it's the highest point. I don't want to spoil it by any announcements except that we, as usual, do Reiki Plus. We do Reiki and things. Reiki and uh, what we know and what we can add to the healing and to understanding and to improvement and growth. So expect miracles. <laughs> expect miracles. And also, before we go, I want to invite more teachers, healing teachers, Reiki teachers, to take part in our teaching. We started the start of Reiki school, and more teachers, the more the better. So Reiki at humancolony.org is our joint email address, send us the, uh, your uh, interest, either as a student or as a teacher, and uh, Kim will uh, coordinate. I bless you all, and <laughs> I thank you for this wonderful co-creation. I'm crying, and I feel absolutely blissful. <laughs>
Всем привет, до свидания, до новых встреч в эфире. Wonderful. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much. Namaste. I, I, I just have a quick thing I want to announce. Yes. I'm going, uh, going to, before the webinar, next webinar, I'm going to do a guided meditation for those who want to go in before the Saturday webinar, 30 minutes before, so you can be calm and rea relaxed when it starts. So everybody, Perfect. Anybody want to join in? It's free. I think of if that goes well, I'm going to do it more. Before the Absolutely. Webinar. I think it's a great beginning. So next week I will. No, this Saturday I will bring Doctorian guided meditation. Absolutely. It's going to be also. Uh, coordinate with someone who organizes it. Um, Guru Dan, Sabrina coordinate so you do it in organized fashion. So the people who join you will, I guess, stay in the same room and continue the webinar. Uh, and I think that's a great beginning. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Good day. <laughs> Bless, blessings, blessings, and go and heal yourself and heal the world. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Jim. Really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Every blessing, every blessing. Much yes, love to you. you. It was, that was the beginning. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Good. Beautiful.